We're going to now be discussing the design of structures in fire, but specifically looking at loading. So what are the loads affecting your building at the time the fire breaks out? So I've got a simplified cross-section through a building here. So we've got a multi-story structure, and then we've got some sort of lift shaft or stairwell providing lateral stability. You normally use a concrete core or various other me uh, methods to provide stability to your building. And let's say now a fire breaks out in this and we need to analyze it. We're going to have a look at now how do we get to the loads that you apply. So if I'm designing a column down here, what is the load in it? How many kilonewtons or tons? And what, is, what are the forces on my beam that I need to determine to get to the, the resistance? Now, at ambient temperature, for normal structural engineering, we use what's called the ultimate limit state, the ULS, the ultimate limit state load. And this is typically, depending on which code you use, around 1.2 times your dead load, G, plus 1.6 times your imposed or live load. So that's the furniture, the people, everything that varies with time. We have a higher factor of safety. And then the parts of the building, the concrete, the steel, the permanent items that don't vary significantly with time. 1.2 times that plus 1.6 times your um, imposed load. So that's at the ultimate limit state. We would then go through and design all the different structural elements. But this is normally based upon around about a 50 year period. So that worst short period of time in 50 years, whether it is a huge party in the building, renovation works, various other things, it would be for that to accommodate that. But now when the fire breaks out, the chance of the worst fire being at the same time, a very short period of time, as the worst loading in 50 years is quite small. So this loading that we apply to the building, we can reduce. And so we generally use around one times the dead load plus a re much reduced factor on the imposed load. This value of 0.5, this is depending on which code you use. This can vary between about 0.3 to 0.9. Uh, also, if it's a shopping center and the chance of maximum load happening when the fire is quite low, you'd be towards 0.3. But if it's a storage warehouse where, or a silo or something like that, it's very likely that it would be virtually full when the fire breaks out. So then you'd be on the higher side using almost the full value of the imposed load. And you might need to take some engineering judgments on that. So that gives an overview of ambient and then fire limit state. But you can see comparing these, we can have quite significantly lower loads at the fire limit state, especially in a structure, a steel structure where the imposed load dominates because I mean this is around about a third depending on which which factor you're using and then one other thing you may need to consider though is you also have favorable and unfavorable for instance we've got a balcony on our building when that balcony is loading loaded, it may increase load in some parts and decrease loads in others because as this bends down, it'll lift the floor up, actually decreasing bending moments um, in certain parts. So depending on whether it's unfavorable or favorable, we may have different factors of safety. Imposed, if it is making our load, um, making our forces less, we can actually ignore it. If it is a permanent load, we could use a factor of 0.9 instead of 1 for this, for the uh, permanent loads. So it depends on how the load affects the rest of the structure. And then also you can pattern load this, having loads on some sections and not on others, but that you would need to have a look at your local code to see how to apply that and look at the structural design principles. But that gives you an overview of loading to be applied to structures at the fire limit state. But while we're here, just a couple of other things to consider, because one thing, you'll see in the fire limit state equation that I've listed there is there is no mention of thermal effects. And in reality, thermal effects may govern. And so I add on here, I'm just going to list it below, plus some force, a characteristic value of the influence of the fire may need to, to fit in here. And that is often ignored but in reality is often the, the governing force. It may be higher than the other elements or the other items. Because I mean, we, if we heat up a column here, it'll expand against it. So it'll actually increase the force in it if there's a fire here. 
if we have a fire in this section of the building, it may cause this column, I mean this beam to expand, pushing out and exerting very high axial loads on it. So as much as in normal fire limit state we ignore this, just be aware that this can actually be quite a significant factor and don't just totally throw it out the window. Also think about your structure, what may happen as things heat up? Could you have high forces that are not necessarily accounted for? And do you need to do something about it? Perhaps you need to increase the fire resistance of sections if they are critical, critical columns or beams. So these are some of the things you might need to consider. So but that gives an overview of looking at structures of the fire limit state with lower factors of safety. But also that is linked to the fact that we accept a higher probability of failure the chance of the fire happening is quite low. So when we look at the overall liability, the overall chance of um, failure, we accept a higher probability of failure per fire, round about one in 10 fires we would consider accepting failure, where that would not be the same at ambient temperature. It's a much, much, much lower probability of failure that we're willing to accept. So those are some of the factors influencing how we go about the design, and it would influence what loads you calculate when it comes to designing your different structural elements. Thank you.